Hello everyone, these are some book talks that I've put together um, because I found that some students just don't know what to read so I'm giving you some suggestions and introducing you to a few of the teen book festival authors. This is a teen book festival author for this year uh, and it is called Winter Girls by Lori Hulse Anderson. Very, very cool author and also actually grew up uh, right in Fayetteville. Leah and Cassie are best friends, winter girls, frozen and fragile bodies, competitors in a deadly contest to see who can be the thinnest. But then Casey suffers the ultimate loss, her life, and Leah is left behind, haunted by her friend's memory and racked with guilt for not being able to help save her. This is a story about loss and redemption. If you enjoy John Green and Gail Foreman, you will really enjoy this author. Variant by Robson Wells. Benson Fisher thought that a scholarship to Maxfield Academy would be the ticket out of his dead end life. He was wrong. Now he's trapped in a school that's surrounded by razor wire fence, where video cameras monitor his every move, and where breaking the rules equals death. All Benson wants is to find a way out. But when he, re when he stumbles upon the real secret the school's been hiding, he realizes that escape may be impossible. So, you think your school is the worst. This is a teen book festival author this year, Jennifer Donnelly. This is the first in a series called Deep Blue. Serafina, daughter of Isabella, queen of Miramara, has been raised with the expectation and burden that she will someday become the ruler of the oldest civilization of the merfolk. On the eve of the Dokimi ceremony, which will determine if she is worthy of the crown, Sarah is haunted by a strange dream that foretells the return of an ancient evil. Watch the book trailer next to find out more. Deep in the ocean, in a world not so different from our own, live a people of the water. For centuries, they have existed in these realms spread throughout the oceans, seas, and fresh waters. Their world is steeped in magic, and until now, unseen from above. I was very fortunate to have a storytelling family. My childhood was just filled with stories and, you know, with this expectation of stories and language. I get this big emotion inside and it builds and it builds and I know a story is coming and I know I have to do something with this emotion. I have to get it out somehow. Disney sent me this really uh, comprehensive mermaid bible that uh, described the characters and the settings, the worlds, the realms. It was so broad and international in its scope, and it gave me the ability to bring in different cultures and different countries, different languages, different music, different foods. These creatures leapt off the pages. They seemed not so much a product of human imagination as just these organic creatures that, that lived and breathed on their own, and they had emotions, and they did things, and they were like us, you know, consumed by what they had to do that day, by their roles in life, by sort of emotional trials that they're going through, and I fell in love pretty quickly and, and very deeply with them. The book opens with the character of Serafina. She is heiress to the oldest civilization of the merfolk, and she has been raised her entire life with this burden and this expectation that one day she will be the ruler. She finds herself haunted by strange dreams that foretell the return of an ancient evil. Her dark premonitions are confirmed when an assassin's arrow poisons her mother. Now Serafina must embark on a quest to find the assassin's master and prevent a war between the nations. Serafina searches for five other mermaid heroines who are scattered across the six seas. Together they will form an unbreakable bond of sisterhood and uncover a conspiracy that threatens their world's very existence. The mermaid's only hope is discovered in the most unlikely form, six talismans from the ancient city of Atlantis. But the same adversaries who have distorted their true past have also hidden the talismans in the deadliest corners of the world. Each one is going to be challenged, each one is going to be tested, each one is going to come of age during this difficult and dangerous journey to find the talisman. It's a big story. It's, it's broiling and there are enormous themes, classic themes of good and evil and contemporary themes of how do I find my place in the world? Who am I going to be? 
it's exciting. I think this is, you know, this, this must be Disney. I've never worked with Disney before. To have this kind of talent at your fingertips and to be able to evolve something and make it better and better and better all the time, it's, um, it's new to me and it's just as exciting as can be. Fantasy League by Mike Flupica. Twelve-year-old Charlie is a fantasy football guru. He may just be a bench warmer for his school's football team, but when it comes to knowing and loving the game, he's first string. He even becomes a celebrity when his podcast gets noticed by a local sports radio host who plays Charlie's fantasy picks for all of Los Angeles to hear. Soon, Charlie befriends the elderly owner of the L.A. Bulldogs, a fictional NFL team, and convinces him to take a chance on an aging quarterback. After that, watch out. It's press conferences and national fame as Charlie becomes a media curiosity and a source of conflict for the Bulldogs general manager, whose job Charlie seems to have taken. It's all a bit much for a kid just trying to stay on top of his grades and maintain his friendship with his verbal sparring partner, Anna. If you love sports books, check out more, this book and more, by Mike Lupica. Gone by Michael Grant. Gone is a page-turning thriller that evokes the classic Lord of the Flies along with a horror of Stephen King. In the blink of an eye, everyone disappears. Gone. Except for the young. There are teens, but not one single adult. Just as suddenly there are no phones, no internet, no television, no way to get help, and no way to figure out what's happened. Hunger threatens. Bullies rule. A sinister creature lurks. Animals are mutating, and the teens themselves are changing, developing new talents, unimaginable, dangerous, deadly powers that grow stronger by the day. It's a terrifying new world. Sides are being chosen. A fight is shaping up. Townies against rich kids. Bullies against the weak. Powerful against powerless. And time is running out. On your birthday, you disappear just like everyone else. Fall from Grace by Charles Benoit, a 2016 teen book festival author. Fall from Grace is a novel about self-discovery and a young man just trying to find out what he wants to do with his life. The main character, Sawyer, seems to have his whole life already planned out for him by his parents and his girlfriend, regardless of what he actually wants. This changes when he meets Grace. Grace slowly pulls Sawyer into her plans of becoming famous. And Sawyer goes along with it for a chance to do something that he's in control of for a change. I need you to steal something from me. Grace always has a plan. There's her plan to get famous, her plan to get rich, and above all, her plan to have fun. Sawyer has plenty of plans too. Maybe they aren't always his plans, but they're plans. When Sawyer meets Grace, he wonders if maybe he should come up with a few plans himself. Plans about what he actually wants to be. Plans to speak his own mind for a change and plans to maybe help Grace. Wait a minute. Plans to what? While the ending isn't a traditionally happy one, it makes the reader truly reflect on what it means when we make decisions in our life. Code Docker by Joseph Bruchak. 
Throughout World War II, in the conflict fought against Japan, Navajo code talkers were a crucial part of the U.S. effort, sending messages back and forth in an unbreakable code that used their native language. They braved some of the heaviest fighting in the war, and with their code, they saved countless American lives. Yet their story remained classified for more than 20 years. Joseph Bruchek has written this story about a fictional tale centered around Ned Begay, a 16-year-old Navajo boy who becomes a code talker. His grueling journey is eye-opening and inspiring. It really affects you and the reality of what it was like for Navajo Marines during World War II. Suzanne Young, the program, this is a teen book vessel author for 2016. This is part of a series of books, three in the series thus far. And to find out more, I'll watch the book trailer next. I know better than to cry in front of anyone. One tear could cause panic. One emotion could sound the alarms. One outburst could land me in the program. And once I enter the program, everything I've ever known, everything I've ever done, everyone I've ever loved, are forgotten. <laughs> 